Good evening. I'm Pastor Climola at uh, Trinity Lutheran Church and School here in Toledo, Ohio, and, and this guy is in town. I am Vic. Yeah, I'm Vicar Michael Mapis. I serve here at Concordia Lutheran Church and Preschool. All right. So yeah, we're uh, we're both in our offices today. I think we've had uh, uh, one I was at home, and then the next one you were at home, and now we're both with our uh, heady books behind us. So <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, we look good, don't we? We'll see what we can summarize from these materials we've spent all day reading to uh, bring to bear the question of what does the Bible say about sports and entertainment? And we uh, kind of landed on this um, topic. We, last night was a Super Bowl here. Uh, today's Valentine's Day, and uh, um, we're in the midst of the Olympics and kind of just talking about sports and competition. And uh, um, kind of one of it, kind of wanted to expand it a little bit more. Um, to, to the realm of entertainment as well. And one of the things I was reading today, um, the biggest export of the United States is entertainment. And oh, of yeah. that entertainment field, sports is the largest uh, market within entertainment. So it's, uh, um, they kind of go um, hand in hand, at least from the societal perspective. And I think we'll see some connections as well within the uh, discussion that we're gonna push on you here of, of what does the Bible have to say about sports? What does it have to say about entertainment? Um, and so we'll see some overlapping here. Mm. So you had a good place to start this discussion. You want to start us off? Well, I was thinking, uh, looking at it from the 30,000 foot view, and I kind of always, you'll hear me say that a lot. I, I like to start from that view and then kind of just work our way down in the more specifics. But I, I start with a Bible verse first. And I was looking at first Timothy chapter six, and, and it's when, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy there, and he's talking about the rich. I'll just read the first part of these of this verse. It says, As for the rich in his present age, charge them not to be haughty or set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches. But this little next sentence is why I came here. It says, But on put on God, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. And so it got me thinking it, a lot of the things that we have are things that God has put in our possessions and given us the senses and, and the ability to create these things for, for not only for ourselves to enjoy, but also for others. And it kind of goes right along with the, the, the first article of the Apostles Creed concerning creation. Uh, but in particular, this one part of the explanation is talking about what does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures that he's given me my body and soul, my, my eyes, my ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. My reason and my senses. If God has given us these things to be able to, you know, has given us our these abilities through our senses and reasons, because we're literally all entertainment is comes from those things. Right. Our mind, our imagination, and, and all that. So these are all things, ultimately, I think, in the grand scheme of things, God meant for good for us to enjoy. Right. But now the big 10 cent question is what's in our sin, fallen sinful world post fall. What does that mean now for us? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. And I love that you're um, going to creation for it because well, th this uh, it was kind of an interesting topic because there are a lot of sports uh, references in scripture. Uh, athletic metaphors uh, quite often used in the Pauline epistles especially uh, but but there's not a lot of um, aside from Jacob wrestling with God um, there's there's not uh, I can't think of a single sporting scene if you will unless you count uh, fishing as a sport which that was more of a profession for the the disciples right. in the Bible um, so, so so on the sports aspect sports doesn't really show up in scripture as a direct reflection of what the culture of the uh, you know the um, 6,000 years or whatever it is that, that covered the span of, of scripture's writing. Um, but, but in that, at the same time, there's not a lot of um, entertainment. There's not a lot, there's, you know, there's references to some um, plays. Um, I think Paul, one of Paul's letter references some um, pop culture things, if you will. Um, but there's, there's, I mean, there's not this, this idea of entertainment. If you just looked at scripture at, a devoid of the life existence that humans have, you wouldn't think if you if you summarized what a human's life looked like, thinking about a, a extraterrestrial, who, an alien who has no similar um, existence to us, he comes to earth and he wants to know about humans. So he reads from the Bible, 
they, they probably wouldn't come away saying, oh, these are people who enjoy entertainment. These are people who do a lot of sports. Um, but, but that really is, um, when you step back and actually look at what humanity is, we entertainment and, and uh, leisure activities and, and sporting events do play a big role, especially in our modern day of our existence. And I think it's true throughout history. I mean, it's, you know, the, the typical view of children is children like to play and it's part of your learning and growing process is, is play. So it's, it's just an interesting thing. The, the one place I love that you found that uh, brought that verse from um, where was that first Timothy six. Yeah. Um, that's good. The, he's given us these things to enjoy. And I think that's a truth that we need to lean into. Uh, Ecclesiastes three was the one I came uh, across that, that, um, that came to mind for me for this and Ecclesiastes nine as well brings this um uh, but Ecclesiastes 3, verse 13, he says, Also, everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Mm-hmm. Um, and and a, 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 it, it's a very uh, pointed statement there. It, it doesn't give a lot of explanation as to what that pleasure looks like. Um, it, but uh, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 9, it says, Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun because that is your position in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. So, so again, enjoyment, I think is, is we, we find these references that God calls us to enjoy his creation. Um, and I, and I think that's a good place to start this conversation. No, I agree. And uh, I think next is now, again, what's that look like post fall in our context today? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I came across a, a cool JRR, Tolkien quote, uh, um, actually, uh, let's see, uh, it says, evil cannot create anything new. It can only corrupt and ruin what good forces have invented or made. Mm. Evil cannot create anything new. It can only corrupt and ruin what good forces have invented or made. Um, uh, Joel Berry, down the road from us here, he, he posted that on Facebook today. And I thought that was a great thing for this conversation here, because I, I think they're one of the um, just to, to go on with where, where you're at with this, what has sin brought, what is the fall of humanity brought to pleasure, brought to entertainment, brought to um, athletic competition, <laughs> it, which is kind of an interesting thing because um, in the conversation, Adam and Eve, they didn't have athletic competition that we know of in the Garden of Eden before the fall. So there's no pre-fall um, movie theater that they went to. There's no entertainment as we know it today that that I would venture to say that they really enjoyed before the fall into sin. So, um, and, and that's not to say that um, entertainment and sports have risen because of sin. I, I just think that the timeline of creation didn't give them a lot of uh, downtime to enjoy right. the gifts of creation the way that God allows us and gifts us with. Um, but, but I think one of the things that people um, will argue against um, consuming uh, entertainment or or will caution you against in sport is, is that they're evil because they, they see um, negative aspects of it, whether it's the, the idolatry that can come out of sporting um, uh, environments or, or the anger that arises, you know, in the midst of competition or as a result of losing or um, in, in, in entertainment, the temptations and the jealousies that, that come their way. So they see those evils that, that um, present themselves in these um, these streams and, and they, they start to think, well, these things are evil, but, but I like this quote because it, it's, it's a true thing. Evil cannot create anything new. It can only corrupt and ruin what good forces have invented or made. Of course, the good force, um, and I think J.R.R. Tolkien would agree, is God, the creator. Um, but I think people sometimes get the misconception that, that the devil can create, um, but really what the devil loves to do and, and all he's limited to do is to twist and to pervert the good things that God has, has given us in this world. Now you bring up a good point about evil can't create, can only corrupt. I mean, just look throughout, you know, if you look at all the, for the most part, this is not a truth across the board. It's a broad brush I'm going to paint here, but look at all the wonderful art that came out of the, as Christianity grew. Yep. the paintings but even in particular i'm thinking of the reformation you know, during the dark coming out of the dark ages the reformation now happens the next thing you know you have all these just explosion of music sebastian johann bach 
but, you know, that's one I'm thinking of Bach himself. Um, but even throughout the whole Christian era, you have this wonderful artworks being produced. Uh, Christians doing all kinds of uh, just a God driven artistic, you know, using those gifts in a God pleasing way. It just exploded onto the world scene. And, and I make this, it's come of my personal rants is I've been watching some of the Marvel stuff, been trying to catch up with the whole timeline. You know, with all the, the technology and movies and stuff, they make it great. But, you know, this is nothing new. Yeah. You think about there's nothing new that's come out of Hollywood movies. In, in what way do you mean there's nothing new? Because some just of those uh, CGI it, effects are brand new and <laughs> mind-blowing. <laughs> but for the most part, though, it, it's the same storyline. There's nothing. Yeah. There's no imagination. It's just re taking stuff that's already been done and just redoing it in a lot better way. I mean, in a lot of ways with technology, but the baseline imagination that, that was there that created this, it's not there. Nothing's new coming. Yeah. That, so it's kind of like the good versus evil motif is basically the underlying um, and there's twists and turns to that. Who's good and what is good. Yeah. And evil, right. What is evil. That, yeah. And the, and one of the things that I, I uh, there's a Robert Benet has a Christian, ethics book and i read a excuse me read a couple uh essays from him about um entertainment and, and he uh talked about how um the narratives in, in movies the narratives in our stories um are often um reflections of the greatest story the greatest narration that we have in history and, yeah. and the restoration that christ brings to humanity um and and so many movies that people love to watch are about people um re being restored uh, to uh, something that they they had aspired to, or 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 people being um, able to overcome something that would prevent them, and and all of that, it, for me, it it I think kind of what if I might add that to what you're saying that that this is the story of Christ for us uh, presented in uh, various formats. Obviously, it's not the same redemptive, well, living and active Word of God, but when we see somebody overcoming evil, it, it points us to the to the one who overcomes evil for us. And when we see somebody um, bringing a restoration, that, that's God the Father working to be with us. Is that kind of where you're getting at with that? There's nothing- Yeah, I think so. I mean, this was something that just popped in my head. And I think we talked about this a while back, just in our, you know, just our nonchalant conversations about stuff. But, uh, but you just, yeah, I liked how you tied it back to the redemptive story. That could be the underlying- uh, motif that's motivating people to do the good versus evil, the restoration uh, that, you know, that brings about good entertainment. Right. Per se. Yeah. But yeah. then again, though, the, the probably we're going to get into next, though, I imagine is, but going forward, what makes it not so good? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are the, the detractors from these good things that we have? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, and there's I printed off a gazillion Bible verses that talks about entertainment, just looking at different things. You can spend all day with some of these. But, you know, in some of the stuff here, like in Colossians 317 and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me thanks to God, the father through him. So you can, in a sense, still do things that are God pleasing and, and thanking God for the blessings of ability to have enjoy this enter entertainment. But also you have Ephesians 5 in contrast, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead, instead expose them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and, and looking at, at verses like that in the realm of uh, entertainment, I, I think one of the things that what does the Bible say about entertainment? I think that um, while it doesn't specifically address it, I do think that as Christians, we do put boundaries up around what we call um, entertainment and, and what we call evil <laughs> or, or yeah. what we call good entertainment, what we call evil entertainment, what we call useful, beneficial, um, uh, that, that is worthy of our time and attention and, and what is, you know, not beneficial for our, our life, our spiritual life in this world. And so, um, that, that I think is definitely part of this conversation is that Christians need to be discerning in what they're, um, consuming when it comes to entertainment and, and even sports to a level. Um, there's, right. there's certain sports <laughs> and uh, avenues of sports that, that you, um, jello wrestling, we, we probably don't want to be um, partitioners of, of practitioners of jello wrestling as, 
as God's children. And, and that's not um, because jello is bad. It's not because uh, the human body is bad, but this is a, a twisting of good things that God has given us. And isn't jello good? I mean, as Lutherans, we have to love jello, right? But that's, sorry, that's a rabbit trail. I didn't need to go down. But, but I, I I'm going to let you close that one out. <laughs> <laughs> all that to say, <laughs> all that to say more than I wanted to say, but the, the point is, is that that we, we do want to have a discerning mind. And, and as uh, Philippians 4, verse 8, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And and that's, I think, where where it's a great daily verse for our lives. You know, when when you're filtering, what am I going to spend my time on? And, and Philippians 4, verse 8 gives us a good reference for that. So I do think as Christians, we, we don't have to feel bad or, or be worried about being labeled as prudes because we say, you know, there's a certain level of, of stuff I'm not going to let myself be privy to. And, and that, that sometimes comes in retrospect. You're like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have been watching that, that series on Netflix that had a great storyline, but really the stuff packed around it didn't really add to it yeah, as much as it right. detracted from my... Um, my whole individuality and, and uh, my wholeness in Christ. So, yeah. so I, I think that's kind of the, one of the points I think is important to make with entertainment is, is that there are lines we want to draw in. And I'm probably more uh, lenient and, and allow some things that might be in a gray area at times, but, but there's certain periods of my life where, where I, I want to stop and take an inventory and say, what is this um, contributing to me? And um, if it's, adding more negativity or, or exposing me to more temptations or opening my eyes to more evil than I need to see because there's enough evil in the world as it is, then I might walk back from something that might be quote unquote entertaining because it's not adding to my, my existence or, or allowing me to appreciate the creation, the gifts that God's given us in this world. Yeah. You, you remind me of a text and I just turned it. I actually turned to it in the first flip. Yeah, that must be a good one then. Spirit yeah, is must be good, right yeah. now. Yeah, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, when Paul was uh, uh, talking, he was quoting actually the, the, the pagan philosophers of the time at Corinthians, the, the church there at Corinth. But he says this in verse 12, all things are lawful for me, hmm. but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of the antinomian spirit a little bit, the anti-law per se that the Corinthians were the Christians there at Corinth were dealing with. And, and Paul's trying to, I think, put a, uh, you know, and I think some, they were quoting some of these philosophers. They were, they were still kind of hanging on to some of their pagan background. You know, I'm saved by grace now and I can do anything I want. I can partake of all these things that's going on. And yeah. They, they're, they're talking about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols there. Right. Well, that goes beyond that, though. It was there were some sexual things going on with the okay. temples, you know, the, and stuff. So, but I think what Paul's trying to say is, is not all things are beneficial. He's using their the secular argument, just what you talked about. I think from a non-Christian point of view, there's some things it's just not good for you to watch. Yeah, you know, I think about uh, horror movies. I've never seen anything good about a slashing horror movie. Yeah, I that just me. You know, I what benefit Christian or non-Christian? What benefit do you get out of this? Yeah, well, uh, you know, you know, but then you put on the 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 understanding of who you are as a Christian, who you are as a Christ. Now that adds adds some more specific information for you, to, guidelines and how you are to walk the boundaries per se that we talked about, and how we handle these things. Yeah. You know, so just some things just bad in general. You don't have to be a Christian sometimes to say that's not good. I, you think about also if you realize if I was a Christian living in the first and second century, you know, you have the Greek, you had the games going on and some things might, might be races. I mean, Paul alludes to racing, you know, running marathons and such. Uh, but it also there were some pretty bad other athletic activities going on, like people killing each other to death or animals or people being, or you have an animal against a person or you just throw a bunch of innocent or a bunch of people out there into a Coliseum. So people can get eaten by animals and people would cheer and love that. 
there's nothing good about that. Right. That there's it's hard to find some redeeming value to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, I was going to make a defense of horror movies. I'm not a fan of horror movies, <laughs> but you know, maybe it, it reminds you of the protection that you have in God <laughs> that he uh, defends you against all harm and danger. And so you're being reminded of that, which um, God protects you against. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you though. In, in general on that. No, it, 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 yeah. I mean, think like a horror movie, it's something that's scary, but without all the stuff that goes on, it, it could be a good story. I mean, it could be suspenseful and it could be beneficial in some ways, good entertainment. But boy, then you take like evil can take something and corrupt something that was good and had all kinds of bloodshed and guts and gore. And now you just, what good is that? Yeah. You know, yep. that's just my personal pet peeve. No, I just and, don't like horror movies. I think it's good to step back then and, and kind of re enter this and say, so what perspective do Christians bring to entertainment? Because I, I think there's this, um, I don't know if you feel this, but there's this, this guilt. I, I feel at times, like, am I spending too much time in entertainment or should I spend any time in entertainment? And, and I think there is, um, an, I, I don't think God calls us to a life of, um, th that's devoid of, of these channels of, um, of entertainment or, or, or of appreciation for God's gifts. And I, and I love that's where you started with the first article, because I think that's, a, a, we should be people of prayer. Um, Bible tells us that. And, and so um, pray at all times. So what kind of prayer do you begin your uh, movie watching with? Lord, thank you for these actors and their abilities. Thank you for all who, who went into this. And thank you for the, the story that, that teaches us more about your world. I, I think with that kind of mindset approaching um, both entertainment and then you can kind of think of some parallels for sports too it, that that I think is is useful a useful frame set frame of mind to have um, as you're um, being entertained and, and viewing these things and um, or partaking in these things and, and I think that will also help you uh, reflect you know is this healthy is this wholesome is this beneficial to me or is this um, leading me away from the ultimate good that God desires me to have in Christ no, and it was the take uh, the Super Bowl last night. I mean, I, I enjoyed the game, and and I don't recall He's anything center. that stuck out that was really offensive. Yeah, not even, you know, not even I, the halftime show. <laughs> no. no, I mean, it, and before there's been some controversies surrounded the some of the halftime shows. Yeah, that the, yeah the halftime show, we we um had an event here at Trinity last night. We were watching the the Super Bowl, and it, there was a little bit of discomfort I had, you know, watching the halftime yeah. show and some of the dancing with right, some right, church members right. there. Um, but by and large, it was fairly, um, as far as halftime shows go, fairly um, decent. You know, some of the lyrics were questionable as they are with that yeah, right. genre of music. But, but I've seen it a lot worse Yeah, yeah in the past. And even, even the commercials weren't, nothing stuck out unless I missed something, you know. I don't think I caught all the commercials, but it, for the most part, nothing was maybe want to turn the TV off mm -hmm. or maybe feel uncomfortable, you know, to that degree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I uh, know of some, some churches that show the halftime uh, or the, the Super Bowl at their, their church and they'll, they'll, they'll do something instead of the halftime show. Right. Out of, um, just guarding against what might be there. You never might know probably, get really. Cause you don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 Janet Jackson. So yeah, that, uh, <laughs> but then, um, yeah, why don't we shift real quick to, to sports? Yeah. Well, not even real quick, but let's because we've been kind of talking about entertainment, uh, which I feel like sports in a lot of ways is a subset of entertainment. Um, just to kind of summarize, though, and maybe you can check me or, or add to this. Uh, uh, entertainment is basically we are observing God's creation and appreciating it when we are entertained by things, whether it's through stories or the talents of people that are bringing the stories to us, whether through the acting or the production or um, writing, if you're thinking about um, reading, which is a form of entertainment, we haven't really touched on that. But but whatever um, whatever we do, we we can give glory to God in these things by appreciating that it is a part of His creation. Um, and some of these parts of creation do get twisted uh, towards evil, so we want to be careful that we're guarding ourselves against things that that take more away from our um, life with God than they add to our life with God and the appreciation that it brings for His creation that kind of a fair summary of where we've been no i think so i think that's very good yeah, yeah. And, and and there might be uh, some varying degrees of how much your conscience is troubled 
Yeah. I mean, kind of when I was talking about the horror movies, but, you know, violence and stuff, but also there's times when you take like Saving Private Ryan, the movie, or uh, Gettysburg, the movie. You know, it shows some violent things going on, but it, it kind of adds to the reality of real history. Mm -hmm. You know, I can... I can take those things much better than I could a slasher movie, you right? Know, uh, because there's an historical content to it, and, and there's a purpose in in telling that story beyond just shock and awe. It's it's appreciating the I don't know if it's something you want to appreciate, but it's appreciating the darkness of humanity and the yeah the uh, the reality of of war and strife and, and the the lengths to which people go to protect the those that that they're called to protect. So yeah, there's. And, and there might be some, there might be some varying, like I said, uh, might be some varying degrees of people's conscience with how much they can handle something like that, a yeah. historical aspect of it. Yeah. And that's, that's an individual decision. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and so, so kind of to shift gears towards sports here, I, I think sports is, is a little bit different than this total discussion we've had because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of our um, audience, <laughs> huge audience our, our three viewers up now hey, hey thanks for watching but the um um a lot of us are participants in sports participants in sports um either whether in um earlier days of our life or in certain levels whether it's you know staying physically active with pickleball or whatever it might be that that people partake in um in the sporting things i i think um I, for me, this discussion about sports is is more of a two layered um, approach than uh, the entertainment aspect. Not to say that there aren't any entertainers out there that are watching this, but I think that the chances are that there's more sports participants in the world than there are entertainers. Would, would that be fair? I, so, so no, I, I think that's. I mean, it's if you go to a local high school, you don't. The drama cl club is a pretty small organization as compared to the all the sporting events all the that, athletics yeah athletic stuff right yeah so that's an interesting question i didn't mean to walk myself into that but anyways to, to to say i think we want to look at this the discussion on sports from the aspect of a an athlete and also from a, a consumer or a fan or a, a somebody who's viewing sports and so um that said i i, I think the scripture does have some really good verses to encourage um athleticism um, like i said at the beginning that there's some very clear metaphors uh, that Paul uses athleticism and, and athletic competition to to show us some truths. But uh, one of the um, verses, 2 Timothy 2, verse 5, an athlete is not crowned unless he completes according to the rules. And and um, 1 Timothy 4, verse 8, for while bodily training is of some value, um, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. And um, these, these, uh, those two verses in particular, I think are helpful because it, it gives us an insight um, into what um, athleticism is really about is it's about competition according to rules. And so you're, you're disciplining yourself to a, a certain standard and then um, the bodily training aspect of it. I, I love that. Um, I, I didn't pull it up where, where it says that your body is the temple of the Holy spirit and, and we're called to take care of these bodies. And I think athletic, uh, competition and, and sports um, and, and bodily training, this this is a very useful way to take care of the, the gift that God's given us in our bodies. Um, and so so looking at the athlete's perspective, I, I think sports is of, of great value to especially young people to teach them discipline, to teach them teamwork, to teach them the, the values of working towards a goal and, and the, the, the thrill of victory and the sting of defeat and gracefully um, submitting to, to loss and, and all of those things are, are great lessons that come from sports. Would, would you add anything to that or? Um... No, I, th I think that's a, uh, a, a good observation. I mean, you think about before we were industrialized country, we were more agricultural families had to work in teams, so to speak, to accomplish a certain goal. I mean, it was, uh, everybody, it was all hands on deck on the family farm mm -hmm. or and such to survive. And, and you learn, to work within a team, but as we became more industrialized, more sporting events, commercialized, it's kind of replaced that, but the same values are there. Yeah. You're working together with other people. You're trying to achieve a goal. You got a deadline to meet or whatever that might be. Uh, and I, 
so in a grand scheme of things, those things are good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I love the, uh, the team aspect. I, I, I mean, this might be squeezing too much uh, out of it, but I think the, the, the picture of the body of Christ being made up of many members. And, and I think, you know, especially in team sports, thinking about how every person, every player, every position has a part that they play towards the, the good and, and um, understanding each other's weaknesses and uh, accommodating them or, or, acknowledging other strengths and utilizing them is a great picture of the way the body of Christ um, works together in the congregational level and in ministry settings. No, no, that's very good. So I shouldn't feel guilty tonight if I go out in my garage and work out, right? You should not feel guilty. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's a, it's a great way to give glory to God right. and give the, the body yeah. that he's given you and taking care of it. It's, it's a stewardship uh, question too. Yeah. But what about the bad aspects of, say, sports? Yeah, no, and I and I think that's a, a lot of times what, um, again, uh, nothing evil can be created. It's it's only a twisting of that's what's good. And so what what happens when somebody? Um, well, I'll start with the, uh, the probably the lo- less talked about side when you're when you're awful as a. Um, so I played basketball in sixth grade, and I, it wasn't awful. I think I had the most rebounds for my team because I was scrappy, but. Um, the, um, I wasn't, I, and I'm not a great basketball player. You know, I could, I could start to, to think, you know, I'm worthless because of it. So I, I, I don't think that's as commonly thought of as a, a temptation or a, a pit that people fall in when it comes to athletics. But I think that is worth addressing that, that sometimes people start to measure themselves by this, um, this, uh, this form, this, this, uh, what's the word, this this practice or this, this sport that, that in the grand scheme of things is not an eternal um, measuring stick, so to speak. So I, I kind of trying to understand what you're saying. If someone is, that's their only identity. Yeah. 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 That's, you might, you might ascribe in, and it probably happens in, in family settings. I could picture, you know, where, you know, dad wants the kids to be uh, great athletes and, and maybe they're not um, jazzed by it and, or, or aren't up to, to, feet or, or, or aren't that good at it and so i you know this again speaking of a, a negative situation that probably doesn't happen hopefully it doesn't happen ever but um you know people might start to be judged according to that and, and really that's that's not a standard by which the lord calls us to, to be concerned about yeah also the issue of sportsmanship yeah how you how do you uh control your your you know your emotions and, and such you know because sporting events can be very emotional and sometimes people can just lose it. Yeah. And you know, that'll come out in some bad ways. Yeah. You know, lashing out at another, you know, at someone, another, your competition, your, you know, you're competing against, or maybe a referee, or even the parents not saying some pretty bad things from the stands as yeah. they watch. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's getting to the other side of the equation. But I, I think that's a good, good part because so, sometimes when you're, you're not performing well or you're, um, being beaten by a better opponent, you're, you you resort to sinful uh, reactions instead of what could be a great time to learn humility, a great time to to see this weakness. And and Second uh, Corinthians eleven thirty, if I must boast, I I will boast of the things that show my weakness. How often do you see that right. in the athletic uh, realm? But but these um these realities that we have um, in our our, our deficiencies sometimes present themselves in aggression in other ways. So uh, poor sportsmanship, I think, is is a definitely a, a negative aspect that that comes out in um, athleticism. But the flip side, it's also a great opportunity for a Christian who's participating yeah. in these sports to show uh, to be salt and light in those situations. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of um, Jess Thacker, he was a coach here teacher here at trinity passed away last year but um and this past weekend they had the jess thacker memorial tournament they renamed the northwest ohio lutheran league tournament to the jess thacker tournament which was cool uh tribute to him but one of the reasons they attributed him that way is because every team loved coach thacker even the other team because coach thacker was there you know kids at the free throw line he was applauding them no matter which team they're on kid made a good shot he was applauding them no matter which team they're on and that's he taught great sportsmanship to the players on not just our teams, but the other teams and, and the parents that were in the stands as well to show and, and to remind people, Hey, 
we're here to do our best. And when the other team's doing their best, yeah, we, we would like to do better, but we don't have to be upset because they're doing well. We can rejoice in their goodness. And that's a great, right. great Christian way, great biblical way to approach the, um, um, to approach the realm of sports. And uh, I, I always find myself um, telling my children, I said, uh, one of my favorite verses, I should know the reference off the top of my head, but I don't, but always consider others more significant than yourselves. And, and I think there's just um, a beauty in approaching the world that way. And uh, there's great beauty when you see professional athletes approach or, or even collegiate or uh, amateur athletes approaching their, their sporting events, their competitions that way is to say, hey, this, this person's doing good. And I'm going to acknowledge that while I continue to try to do my best. Yeah. Now, what about, uh, there's probably a good place to end off and and if you want to go in this direction, but what, where does sports, obviously it, it does become, at what point does it become an issue when it interferes with your relationship with Christ? Yeah, no, that's, 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 um, and I, I think this, this part of the conversation can um, hit both entertainment and the participation side, the athlete side of sports, and then the, also the viewer side of sports, because I think the, the number one, um, temptation, the number one pit that we can fall into in, in any realm really is, is the idea of idolatry. Um, and, and I think when, when something starts to take the place of God, um, then you're, you're really needing to, to evaluate your, your position, your disposition towards it. And, and so I, I think anytime something starts to supplant the things of God, whenever it drives you away from God, whenever it gets into the way of your your hearing of God's word and receiving his gifts and worship I mean to be blunt about it those those things we really need to pause and say is this beneficial to me or am I making this into to an idol kind of what Matthew says in uh, gospel of Matthew in chapter six where your heart is there your treasure or where your treasure is there your heart is also right and uh, and you know is uh, as a pastor you, you you're having you're probably having harder and harder times to work around. I mean, with, with confirmation and things. And also you probably seen on Sunday morning where people are not showing up to church services now, or maybe not, they can't make it to confirmation because of sporting events. You know, one time in this, in this country, Wednesdays and Sundays was off limits. Right. Now it's, they've taken over those yeah. sacred times. Yeah, I actually heard from Indeed. some people that when uh, things resumed after COVID, when uh, athletic, uh, leagues resumed after covid they they uh at least one person told me their their league stopped honoring sunday mornings even um they kind of used covid as a transition to say all right well nobody nobody's in church now they're all they can watch it online so let's just take sunday morning too as a time slot so yeah it's it's definitely uh something that yeah in. because it's 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 you talk about idolatry it's a first commandment issue it's a it's a third commandment issue mm -hmm. and, and to be blunt about it, if that's those things are interfering with with your relationship with Christ, and you know, forsaking assembling with others, being you know, coming to the means of grace, you can receive what God wants to give to you. Yeah. Uh, as I talked about Sunday or yesterday in the children's match, these were like little plants. You know, if a water survives. You know, it needs water. But we Christians are a lot like little plants. If we remove ourselves from that word of God, the means of grace. We're going to be like a plant that that doesn't no longer receive water. We're going to dry up. Yeah, and that's a danger. And I think it's a reality. I we probably need to start talking more about. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth considering. And and what what fuels you? And, and uh, I think yesterday's passages were really good for for this. Our, our scripture readings, at least in church. Uh, so Luke chapter six, we had, "Woe to the rich, for they have received their consolation. Um, woe to the full, for they will be hungry. Woe to the." Uh, um, to those who laugh, for they will weep and mourn, and and I think in this context of, of entertain conversation of entertainment and and sports, you know that that laughter, um, if that's your ultimate pursuit, um, in in a, as I preached it, I talked about you know this God's not telling us don't be rich, He's not telling us don't be full, He's not telling us don't laugh, He's He's just making sure those things happen in the right order. Um, and, and God right. wants to be first in our life and we need to have him first in our life um, because without him, we become twisted and, and evil <laughs> and yeah. ultimately separated from him. No, it's a scary thought. 
Yeah. And I, I, I think my hope and prayer is that other people start thinking about it the same way we're talking about it right yeah. now. To yeah, no, it's, it's a good conversation to have. Back. I, I, I got one, um, might seem oddball, but it kind of connected to this sports thing. Should we pray for our team to do well? Do you think God's uh, answering those prayers? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot with this one. Dear Lord, well, if the goal, please let if the, the Michigan goal Wolverines is... always beat the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> you know, it's uh am I taking is that a second commandment issue there? Am I taking the Lord's name in vain? That's that's a good way to ask. No, I think if you know, coming I I played football, I coached football. I mean, the prayers always was Lord uh, give us the strength and and the uh the fortitude to win this game. May both sides come out injury free, you know, it would uh, I think there's a good way you can approach this, but if your goal is to win that sporting event, there's nothing wrong with praying about it as long as it's done in a good godly way and good sportsmanship comes out of this. Uh, no one gets hurt. Yeah. People are edified from this competition. Uh, yeah, I think there's a, it's the same way when you go to war. I mean, you got two Christian countries going against each other. That both sides are praying to, to the same God to, to win and prevail. Right. No, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. I, I, I think I kind of, um, then prayer is definitely good, but I, I think it'd probably be better to pray for, let us pray, play to the best of our abilities. Let us, you know, stay yeah. injury free and, and thanking God for the opportunity rather than almost forcing God to choose sides. It, it almost seems kind of comical when you put it in those terms, you know, Lord, let us win if it be your will. And, and you, I mean, God is in control of all things, but, uh, yeah, I, I kind of stepped in with the war analogy, but now I'm thinking about it. As yeah. I said it, I mean, you got two Christian countries. Uh, it, war, in some sense, is is you talk about it's one of the most uh, obvious forms of competition. You want to say that the one that no one wants to do or go to, but it is a competition at the end of the day. Yeah, we might You're have there to, to pick defeat up that the other conversation. I mean, might have right? To Did you pray that that, soon? Right. Um, you know, I, what would you pray? I, I mean, I think I would pray to Lord to end this quickly. May we prevail with the, you know, I, I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah. If you're a chaplain in the military, I mean, I don't, we're going in a direction probably shouldn't be going, but. <laughs> yeah, stepped in, it just, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think about that one. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Uh, I think we will, we'll, we'll have a, what does the Bible say about war? I think that'll be war. a good conversation it's a good topic right yep yeah not quite not quite sure we're not quite organized enough to do uh to let you know it's coming next week yet we kind of throw the throw these ideas at each other and then let one land where uh but we'll we'll be back um with another topic soon so um just some kind of closing thoughts here um um I, one of the great things that uh scripture teaches us is christ's victory over sin death and the devil and and i i love um I love metaphors. That's probably one of the reasons I'm a pastor. I love to see how things line up and teach you about other things. And, and so I think competition on, on some levels and athletic competitions can remind us of the greatest victor Christ and, and that which he's overcome for us. And he makes us to be the victors, um, not by any merit of our own, but, but his for us. And that's, that's great. And, and that, that ties back to entertainment as well as, as we kind of already said, the the greatest story ever told is God's love for the world and, and how he sent his son Jesus to rescue us uh, from sin, death, and the devil so that we could be with him forever. And that restoration story, um, it, pay attention as you're watching um, and reading and, and taking in stories. Uh, you'll, you'll see that showing up, with, whether it's directly the story of Christ or, or whether it's something that makes you think of what Christ has done for you. No, no, that's well said. Well said. All right, you got any zingers for me? Any uh, last minute questions or closing thoughts? No, but there is a pastor, Ted Giese, I believe his name is, yeah, on issues, et cetera. You. Yeah. Yeah, talks about entertainment movies and tries to glean something out of that, that's good out of those things. You know? Yeah, he, he often has a, a, an analysis, a Christian analysis of especially the big blockbuster hits that come out. So Ted Giese, G I E S E, um, I think he's out of Canada. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, but you'll yeah, catch yeah. him on issues, et cetera, program. It's really good. Yeah. Another, another guy I, I was reading today, um, 
Gene Veith, he had a couple things that were helpful. He's got some good writings, um, but yeah. So, well, with that, I, th I think we'll let you go and um, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, with whatever topic we come up with next. So. All righty. Blessings. All right. Take care. Yep. Bye -bye.